Hey guys, what's up? I'm Rory from RLL Woodworks, and today I'm gonna to make something for my dad for Christmas. He's kind of a hard guy to shop for, but he loves the Chicago Cubs and he loves fire, so I'm gonna put those two things together and come up with something that I think he's really gonna like. If you've followed my channel for a while or seen any of my earlier videos, you know that wooden flags are a big part of how this little side business got started. As I said in my intro, my dad loves the Cubbies, so I decided to make him a flag that's shaped like home plate. I pulled some pine scraps from my new cutoff storage cart and cut all the pieces to rough dimensions. If you're admiring my table saw cart right now, I'll put a link to the build in the upper right hand corner. I put a small chamfer on all the pieces to give each stripe a little more definition. I then used a cardboard template to get a rough idea of where each piece looked best and to minimize waste. This also helped me ensure the natural character of the wood was how I wanted it without too many knots in one area. Next I started the burn process, and if you're going to try this I suggest doing it outside or in a well ventilated area with a fire extinguisher nearby. Burning the wood this way really pops the grain and gives a contrast for whatever's going to be carved into it. It's also mesmerizing to watch. After burning the first few pieces it wasn't as dark as I was hoping for. I had never charred anything beyond this point so I grabbed a few scraps to see how far I could go without ruining it. I found that right to the point of actually catching fire was the look I was going for. And once I was happy with the test piece, I finished the burning process on the rest of the flag, being sure to put each piece back where it came from. The next step was to carve out the logo. I laid down some tape and then secured a piece of paper with the logo on it. I used delicate surface painters tape to avoid pulling off too much of the charred wood. I then used an art knife to score around the intricate design and really took my time here because this will serve as a template for the next step, which is carving away the actual logo. For most of the carving, I used a Dremel with a 106 bit, which allows me to get most of the fine details but also lets me take away larger patches of material when needed. I took really light passes which keeps the bit from catching and I slowly worked around the entire logo. I did this part now instead of after everything is glued up because if I messed up I'd be able to replace the piece more easily. And you'll notice that I don't have the Dremel comfort grip so if I had a larger area to do that's probably an investment worth making. Once the inside of the logo was defined, I removed most of the tape and then used the Dremel 108 bit to finish the really fine line around the outside. Thankfully, mistakes were not made during this part and I was really happy with the result. Next, I moved on to the glue up. I used a piece of quarter inch plywood as a backer and I did this both to add some stability to the piece and to give it a thicker profile. If you're new to the channel, I'd really appreciate you hitting the like and subscribe button and following along for more projects like this and others. Some random heavy objects around the shop served as excellent clamps while the glue dries. Now that everything was glued up, I started to trim it to size on the table saw. The top and sides were easy, but for the angled cuts on the bottom, I got a little more creative. I used a board that was wide enough for the piece to sit on and set my fence at that width. I then marked the two ends of my first cut line and secured the piece to the board using tape and CA glue. By lining up the two marks with the edge of the board and running the board along the fence, the saw cuts a straight line and you're left with the desired angle. Repeating these steps on the other side gave me a perfectly proportionate home plate shape. And the board that I used for this little jig is as good as it was before. Next I softened all the edges with the same chamfer bit and then burned the exposed wood just like before. To cover up the edges and the plywood base, I decided to wrap this in a thin frame. These aren't perfect 45 degree angles, so I used an angle finder to find the exact degree. For the bottom, you can see here it's about 99 degrees, so I know my miter gauge needs to be set up at 49 and a half degrees. 
Instead of trusting the gauge, I used the tool to transfer the exact angle to the saw, which resulted in a perfect miter. I cut all the pieces to the appropriate angles and used tape to ensure it would fit. I then removed the frame, glued it together, and burned it with a torch. Lastly, I secured the frame using glue and a few brads. And after a few coats of varnish, I was done. I hope this inspires you to try something similar. Wooden flags like this make great gifts and they also sell well on Etsy or at craft shows. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you again on my next video.